If I were to ask you what your favorite birthday was, what would you say? I personally love birthdays, other people's and my own. This past birthday, I had the biggest party that I've ever had, which was funny to me because it wasn't even one of the big milestone birthdays. But my friends made all my favorite foods and the night was full of fun and laughter. I left feeling so full and celebrated by people I love. A couple of years ago for my birthday, one of my friends put together a video of a bunch of people in my life telling me why they loved me. I still will play it every so often when I'm feeling particularly down and in need of encouragement. But something that struck me the last time I watched this video was what my friends were pointing out in me. It wasn't anything that I felt like I mustered up in my own strength. What they were really pointing out is what God has done in my life. The areas that he has brought healing and given me strength, the tiny glimpses that I so brokenly reflect of the good things about who he is and how he has made me. Something like a birthday gives us an opportunity to celebrate the people in your life. And what it really can be is an invitation to remind each other who we are in Christ, what he has done in our lives. That is what is worth celebrating. And that kind of celebration is actually one of the disciplines we can cling to. Celebration is one of my favorite things that we get to do, to cling to the good stuff, to remember the faithfulness of days gone by that we have had to hold on to as things get harder. Celebration helps us to remember. One of the clearest ways that these two concepts of celebration and remembrance are tied together for me is in Kids Station. Our elementary kids at Chapel Street on Sunday mornings go through a curriculum that has a rhythm in it called Remember and Celebrate. The curriculum starts with this question. How often do you really take time to contemplate the things God has done and praise him for them? The goal of a remember and celebrate weekend is to remember God's faithfulness as we take a look back at what he has shown us about himself from the big God story. It invites children to pause and look back at all they've discovered about God and the ways that they've experienced him. And I want us to think about that. How often do we really think about the things that God has done and praise him for them? I'll be the first to say that I forget so easily. I come up with what feels like a new problem and I so quickly forget all of the ways God has shown up for me and people in the past. We need to be reminded, we need to remember all that he has done and celebrate it. Not just in some shallow way that we just ignore all of the pain and longings and agony, but in a way that recognizes who God is and the ways that he has proven to be faithful. God wants us to remember and celebrate his work in our lives, not to fulfill a duty, but to renew our minds with his faithfulness, goodness, beauty, and love. He wants to use remembrance and celebration to strengthen us in our weakness to comfort us in our sorrows, to reorient us in our confusion, to sustain us when we feel afraid, to give us something to praise him for when we feel empty, as we learn in Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19. Think about this. Every time God provides for you, he wants to comfort you in that moment, but he also wants to give you something to draw from for hope and encouragement for days, weeks, months, even years to come. God wants to use your memory of his provisions as a monument to you, saying, my child, remember what I've done. I still see you. I am still with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. He wants your memory of his provisions to increase your confidence in him and love for him. And if you are having trouble finding something to celebrate from your own life, look back to the cross. Remember what Jesus did for you. He gave up his life as a monument of his love for you. And if he didn't leave you then, in the moment when his suffering was most intense, you can be confident that he won't leave you now. He is fully and forever committed to you in love. There's an old hymn that I love called, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. There are several stanzas in that song that I really love, but one of them stands out to me most. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. It's a beautiful picture to me. By God's help, we have come this far, and by him we will arrive safely at home in heaven with him. There's a word in that line, though, that stuck out to me that I wasn't completely sure what it meant. Ebenezer. So I looked it up, and it said Ebenezer means stone of help. The word Ebenezer shows up in the Bible in the book of 1 Samuel. 
the Israelites were in a battle with the Philistines and Samuel was praying and interceding to God on behalf of the Israelites, crying out to the Lord, pleading with him to save them. God showed up for the Israelites and they beat the Philistines in the battle. And it says in 1 Samuel 7, 12, then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. The line in the song of Come Thou Fount, talking about raising up your Ebenezer, is not just a light, hey, let's just remember how good God is, but it's a specific response to when things are really hard. When they were in a battle with what looked like no way out, God came and helped them. He showed up when they were in desperate need of him. It wasn't just a remembrance of good things that had happened, but remembering that in the midst of the hard, God was there. He helped us. When it felt desperate and hopeless, he pulled through. Whenever the Israelites looked at that stone, they would remember how God had helped them. God is the fount of every blessing. Every good gift does come from him. Even the moments when it feels dark, he is there. I wish that I could put a nice little bow on this and say that it all works out really great and all of the things that you're carrying will work out perfectly and everything will be good. But I can't say that. What I can say is that we have a God that will help us when we desperately cry out to him. He will show up and help us. Even when it isn't sunny and bright, we can still choose to celebrate and remember the good. It's not something passive, but it's a rallying cry for us to cling desperately to the good, to have gratitude for who God is and what he's done. Celebrating and remembering that because when the trials come, and we know that they will, we have a stone we look to in order to remember this. I want to invite you today to find five minutes that you can sit in silence. Remember the question I asked at the beginning. How often do we really think about the things that God has done and praise him for them? Today, I invite you to spend five minutes to remember what God has done in your life. Make a list of three to five things and spend time thanking and praising God for what he's done. May you remember and celebrate who God is and what he's done for you.